so by way of an additional introduction, you see up here that it says an elected official's perspective. Um, in, in a not too distant previous life, um, I was an elected official in Iowa, uh, in Lynn County, which encompasses the city of Cedar Rapids. And back in 2008, Cedar Rapids and Lynn County had a pretty significant flood, only 10 square miles of the core downtown area underwater. So, um, but if I were to fast forward six years before that, as an individual, um, on the day I was actually first running for office in a primary, the headline the day after the primary read, Wins Primary Loses House. I lost the house, not entirely, but to the tune of about seventy-five dollars to $80,000 worth of damage, to a flash flood in an area that had never really had that kind of flooding before. So when I came to office, I think I had more understanding than most about what might be involved um, and what kind of perspective an elected official could have. So um, in a perfect world, we should all be in this together, whether floodplain managers or elected officials or a community. One would think, wouldn't one, that people could have this at the center of their focus? Now, I would ask you, is that true in your community? I'm guessing maybe not. So first off, I want to say that language matters. And the challenge is that each of us in our own profession and in our own worlds have our own language. So oftentimes when I speak to emergency managers, and floodplain managers could be close, we live in a land of alphabet soup, especially if you're dealing with the federal government. And to the average person in the community, they have no earthly idea what you're talking about. Nor, oftentimes, does the elected official. And perspective matters. So yesterday you heard Roy Wright speak about the fact of the issues related to an elected official. And I know I've been invited by FEMA to talk to their floodplain managers in that whole division, and they cannot understand why, why as elected officials do you not pay attention to the wonderful tools that we have and all of our great maps. Like the elected official that spoke to Roy, do you have any idea what I do in my life? So most elected officials, I at least had the benefit of my elected job was a full-time job. But for most elected officials, they have some other job and they're in elected office. And many in those elected office have a really broad span of control. When I was in office, I oversaw veterans I saw, oversaw mental health and developmental disabilities, public health, uh, zoning, planning, secondary roads, the list went on. There were 15 department heads that reported directly to me. So sometimes this might not have risen to that level of importance. And how do we make it a collaboration? So it's great that you're all here. And the good news is there are a lot of NGO partners here as well. But who are the other partners in your community to whom resilience and flood hazard mitigation might be important? I would tell you that in all likelihood, people like the United Way might be very interested in what you're doing. Because most people in the United Way are working towards building a more equitable community. And the reality is that we know the history tells us that most of the at-risk properties are in core areas or areas where people 
really struggle to live. So in some cases, the work that you do as floodplain managers is on one end an issue related to equity. And sadly, on the other end, it's dealing with developers that are going to develop pieces of land. And those developers come to the elected official and tell them that this is going to increase their tax base. While you are on the other side saying, this is a really bad idea. And sadly, who wins most of the time? I'm guessing it might not be you. It might be the developers. So what we're missing is really the concept that FEMA talks about, which is a whole community. So I also serve on the National Academy of Sciences Resilient America Roundtable. And resilience to me is really about a whole community, and it is about a definition that talks about responding to, absorbing, and adapting to disruptions or crises, and coming back to your core functions. It really is about the whole community. When you're doing a risk assessment, that risk assessment really is about the whole community. So you're not just looking at infrastructure, you're also looking at what's the social capital in your community. What are the physical realities of your community? So I would encourage you to begin to think a little more broadly about who your partners might be. So here's the other deal. Some meetings that I went to look like this, and the people who came to meetings, they weren't always happy with me. They were sometimes yelling and upset. I have often said, if I never had to cite another landfill in my life, it would be just fine. So the challenge for elected officials is that they are rarely strategic. They are almost always reactive. It is what is right in front of their face at that moment in time. And that's the challenge that I think all of you have, because your goal, and you live in a world that is very strategic, looking to the longer term. But the public demands that come in front of elected officials are varied and broad. Most elected officials are a mile wide and an inch deep. They have to know a lot, but they may not know a lot about any one thing. Building relationships with staff is required to get to outcomes, but if you don't have agreed upon outcomes, will your elected official actually work with you? How do you get to a shared goal and a shared vision? And truthfully, if I were to be honest, most elected officials are interested in getting reelected. So part of how you might talk to them about is what happens if you don't do what I'm suggesting? What does that future look like? And that future could look really bad. So once upon a time back in Iowa, I was walking some back roads with then Governor Vilsack, and I asked him, what was the most important lesson you ever learned when you got into elected office. And he said, Linda, I was talking to Governor Zell Miller right after I got elected, and he said, go out and learn everything you can about emergency management. He told me that eventually a disaster will come to your state, and if you're not ready for it, you will look like a fool. He said, I took him at his word, and of course, we have had disasters. Most elected officials fail to realize that the work that you do is setting the groundwork so that there's the least amount of failure in your community when something bad happens. So the challenge is that building resilience takes collaboration. And oftentimes I find that we live in our own silos. You're floodplain managers and folks that are associated with that. How do we build broader collaborations to talk to the whole community? And here's the other deal. Saying no is very hard as an elected official. You have people coming and asking you things all the time. And so I wonder, just in this audience, 
How many of you have actually looked at the elected officials for whom you might work and told them that they are foolish, perhaps stupid, and no, they can't do that? Probably didn't go well for you. So your challenge is how do you build a relationship with your elected official so that you actually can tell them that? so that you actually can say, what I am suggesting is that if you do these things, it will be bad, whether it's bad for the state or it's bad for that local community. And of course, we all know this next one, people have really, really short memories. Once I testified to Congress, and I asked them, I said, you know what? I think at the time I was about 60, I said, based on how many floods I've lived through, I'm 3,500 years old. Don't you think I look really, really good? People forget. People don't want to know the bad things that could happen to them. I was always astonished. In the realm of health, Folks don't even get their annual exams, and the county paid for it, for heaven's sakes. What's that about? It's about the human reality that we don't want to know bad news. You know, if it's going to flood tomorrow, that's tomorrow. I'm living today. Your job is to forecast tomorrow, the tomorrow that some people believe will never come. So. I would suggest to you that it's also about then changing the language and changing the perspective so that what you're talking about is a shared vision of the community you want to live in. Because that's a positive perspective. And people will pay attention to that. They should. So risk, in my estimation, is the chance of something bad, perhaps really bad, happening. Resilience, as I said, is the ability for a system to respond, absorb, adapt, and recover from some kind of disruption. Assessing risk is looking at the natural as well as the social and the political landscape. There are landmines in all of those places. And resilience is not a fixed commodity. It is something you must attend to every single day because nothing stays the same and change is moving faster than any of us ever imagined. The vision and understanding of risk and resilience requires work every single day, which is a little depressing when you already have too much on your plate. But if we make resilience an embedded value, so that we think about economic loss or, God forbid, a loss like what happened in Orlando, tell me that community isn't reeling and isn't challenged in the same way as if they had a flood or a tornado come through. What's the community you want to build? So it's always good to understand, and I told this to the folks at FEMA, where does the floodplain manager sit in the organizational chart of any given community? I'm sure you're the state floodplain manager. You report to the governor, right? I hear a little tittering. Probably not. And it's the same way in local communities. The floodplain manager, my, I, in, in my community, actually, the floodplain manager was our planning and zoning director, and he actually did report to me. But in many communities, it might be a two-off or even a three-off. And here's the deal, that local floodplain manager, usually when he's talking to the elected official, is coming to say something when, when it's not good news. Oh, we've redone the maps. I know that. I had 20 calls this morning from people who have discovered that they're now in a floodplain. That's not the time to build that really excellent relationship so you can have frank discussions because your elected official is, frankly, right at that moment, pissed off. You are not going to be their friend. But if you can help an elected official understand why should they care? Because why? Because being prepared is far less expensive than being unprepared. And if you really want to put it in terms that they will understand, remind them that for many electeds, being unprepared means not getting reelected. It 
will be the fact that you are specifically in a position to make them look good <clears throat> when they might not otherwise. So do ask them what they're most concerned about. Ask them whether they've actually read something like the HMP. And if they haven't, give them a summary. I was appalled to learn that an individual in California in a very large community, which shall remain unnamed, didn't even know that such a thing existed. But after I was done giving one of those talks, great, he found that out. I would also suggest that you consider finding different allies and different partners. Let's not all live within our own worlds. There are other people in the community who will help you do what you need to do. Your elected is a convener. Truly, leaders are the conveners, not necessarily the ones who have to do all the talking. Because here's the deal about obstacles and opportunities. We all know that we don't have enough time. We all know that there's not enough money, except, of course, that if you don't invest the money now, you're going to pay a lot more money later. This may never happen. Really? Really? Have you ever plotted floods on a graph? I will tell you that for most communities that I've looked at, that is not a flat graph. For most communities I've looked at over the last 150 years, this is what it looks like. And this means we're going here. And if we are going here, we're in not so hot a place. Always remember that politics is a part of this game. The fact that, tell them, that folks tell themselves that others will fix this when it does happen is a misnomer. If we look at where FEMA is headed, where the finance of this is headed, that's not going to be true for very much longer. So our language has to change. And it can't just be floodplain managers, and it can't just be electeds, and it can't just be FEMA. What happens if we pull in the whole of the community? Because it is a better and more resilient community that we are trying to build. A safe community, a thriving community, with a common vision of what people want. So to make the case, I think you have to talk in budgetary terms. Math is important, always was, always will be. If you're not looking about it at it now, you're going to find out that it costs you a lot more on the other end. Give your elected officials tools for responding to developers. Developers are insistent. Here's the other deal, and this is really what I'm going to close with. When we think about whether the road is going to be closed or whether we'll find a way to keep it open, is going to be about you as an individual. What I remind people is politicians get elected or they don't get elected. In your home community, how many of you vote regularly? Show of hands. OK, this is good. How many of you tell your friends? How many of you tell the folks you go to church with? And do you actually have conversations at work about those elected officials in your community that you know are doing the right thing? I have seen elected officials make the commitment in small communities to do planning and zoning. And what happens in the next election? They get unelected. When people make the commitment to do good work, we very often don't reward them. We reward them when they do things we don't like. So a politician is always living on that tension line of disappointing people in the community at a rate they can tolerate in order to get to a greater good. Your job both in reality of where you work, but as a community member, is to support those folks who have with you a shared vision and will go to the mat for you. 
And that, I personally believe, is one of the challenges that we have today in our communities and in elected office. Because if we want the vision of a safe, thriving, healthy, resilient community, which I actually think, whether Democrat or Republican, you could probably agree on. And that means we have to attend to flood hazards. What is being built or not built in the floodplain? And supporting and informing those elected officials so we get to the outcomes we want. So, thank you very much, and we're gonna do questions at the end.